Hello and welcome to Chapter 6, Part 2 of Small Business Management, where we will be uh, specifically reviewing the business plan. In Part 1, we took a look at the business model, which comes before the business plan. Uh, again, an entrepreneur would not want to waste time or money creating a business plan if the business model proved that the business was not feasible. Um, so we will look at the business plan uh, through uh, in this chapter. Here are the learning goals for the chapter. So the business plan basically is a playbook. Uh, it outlines the basic concept of the business, what problem the business solves, um, and how it solves that problem. Um, there's key elements that are involved, as you can see here, but to me, the business plan is a document that gives the entrepreneur or the owner uh, its general, his or her general direction. It states what the business is all about. It um, it discusses and shows how the business is going to achieve its goals. And it is a document that is what I would call dynamic. In other words, it's very flexible and always changing. Now, when I say always changing, it's not changing every day. But as market conditions change or something changes with the customer base, the document would also change. And I'll give you an example when we, uh, as we go through the chapter. So as, as again, uh, again, as I said, the business plan is like a playbook. It gives the, the coach, the entrepreneur, the plan of attack, what the business is all about. And it can help give or does give the owner um, a general direction. As I mentioned earlier, it's dynamic in that it's always changing um, as factors that affect the business change. So who uses a business plan? Well, inside the organization, the business plan is used by the owner or the entrepreneur and his or her management team. It's also used by employees. So let me give you an example. Whenever I would hire someone at my medical equipment company, I would give them a copy of the business plan to review as part of their training. It told them about the products. It told them our general marketing philosophy. It told them who our competitors were. It told them about all the products that we carried. It gave them a really good overview of the company. So inside the organization, it's used by basically everybody, the entrepreneurs, the management team, as well as the employees. Externally or outside of the business, it's used obviously by lenders or banks. They want to see if you're going to request um, capital from a bank through a loan or through potential investors um, or even seeking partners you're going to have to have a business plan it's basically going to be required they are going to want a plan in their hand so that they can review it um, one of the things that some people have a mistake or are mistaken about is that if you are not going to request outside funds, uh, much like myself, when I opened up my business, I opened it up with my own capital. I didn't request a loan. I didn't seek investors. I necess didn't necessarily have to have a business plan. But a business plan increases your chances for success. And for me, it was a no-brainer. I actually spent months and months creating my business plan before I ever made the decision to actually quit my job and open the business. It was almost like an insurance plan for me. Once I seen, once I created this document and I created it, created it objectively, in other words, I didn't sugarcoat it, 
just because I wanted to do it. I was very objective, putting down the statistics um, and, and all of the uh, all the data was backed up that was in the in the document uh, by and and sourced. So, to me, once I c completed the plan again uh, after months of uh, working on it, it basically. Uh, reassured me that this idea was going to work so it, it, to me a business plan is needed whether you seek investors or seek outside capital or not but it's not required uh, anyone can go open up a business and they don't necessarily have to have a business plan but if you are going and looking for capital outside of the company or uh, other than yourself you're going to have to have a business plan uh, so the lenders are going to require it. Investors are going to require it. Suppliers may uh, require it. And what I mean by suppliers is some suppliers will give businesses trade credit. And uh, if you're not familiar what, with what trade credit is, basically if you were buying inventory to fill your store or to actually replenish um, products that have been uh, sold in your store. Sometimes suppliers will give the business credit, trade credit, meaning that if I order $10,000 worth of inventory, it will be delivered. And one, the day that it's delivered, it the uh, $10,000 is due 30 days from that, either the delivery date or the day that I ordered it. But... I actually have the product in hand before I even actually paid for it. So that credit that I'm getting is called trade credit. It helps businesses sell products and keep the cash flow positive. Now, initially suppliers don't usually issue trade credit. You have to fill out a credit form and they may require to see your business plan. So that's where that would really come into play. But after you've been approved through credit and they've reviewed your business plan, you will receive trade credit where you can order products from the vendors, from the manufacturers, have them delivered. You can begin selling them before you actually paid uh, the manufacturer for those products. So you can see where there are a lot of um, people or organizations that use a business plan. So, will writing a plan make a difference? Well, as I said earlier, it will increase your chances of success if the plan is written well and written objectively. But you have to keep in mind a couple things. There is time and money involved because it does take time and money to create. Um, the money w the money could be translated from the time that it takes. So if you worked 40 hours on it, what's your time worth? And you may also have to buy information or do research. So there could be some type of outside cost involved. Um, but here are some other factors affecting the extent of the plan. Uh, obviously, time and money that it's going to take or that it, that it will take. Uh, if you don't have a lot of time, you don't have a lot of money, the business plan is probably not going to be that comprehensive. You don't have time to put together a really uh, long plan. And we'll talk about short and long plans here in a minute. Management style and ability. Uh, in my business plan, uh, the management section is very short because I was the actually actually I was the only employee the owner employee for the first few months that I was in business and so the initial business plan didn't have a very extensive uh, uh, management section involved in it preferences of the management team uh, how extensive do you want the plan to be Obviously, when I created my business, because I wasn't seeking outside investors or seeking outside capital, I could have made the, the plan as long or short as I wanted to. 
but I, I preferred actually to make sure that it was uh, long enough to make sense and long enough to explain exactly what the business was all about. Complexity of the business. Obviously a hot dog stand versus a tech startup are, are different. And so a hot dog stand is probably going to have a very short business plan. It's not going to take uh, an extensive plan to describe what's going on there. However, it's a, if it's a chemical company or a tech startup, that, may, that, that could be a comprehensive plan. The competitive environment. How, uh, how competitive uh, is the competitive landscape? If there's not a lot of competitors, uh, the plan's probably uh, not going to be as long or uh, as comprehensive as one where the, comp where the competition is very fierce. Level of uncertainty. If there's a high level of uncertainty, that plan's probably going to be pretty extensive. And sources of capital. Obviously, if you're looking for external sources of capital, you're going to have to make sure that your plan is fairly extensive and explains everything in detail. Primary function, or the balance between planning and executing this plan. Um, it's good. The plan is going to have the goals and strategies of the company so that it can be used internally and so that the entrepreneur and the management team can look at it as a guide. But it's also going to serve as a selling document. In other words, if we're going to um, seek investment or investors, this document is going to be sort of like a selling brochure about our business. And when you hand that business plan to someone, you're going to want them to look at it and say, ooh, this is a good idea. I'm interested in this. So it, it, it's a selling document as well as that playbook that I talked about earlier. I talked about the short plan versus the comprehensive plan. Um, and I think most plans for most businesses should be somewhere in between um, the two. Obviously, a hot dog stand or a, a lawn care business, it's, it, those are fairly simple businesses uh, with not a lot of capital uh, resources needed to get them up and running. So, you know, a short plan may be, uh, may be uh, okay or uh, will satisfy the need. Um, but then again, I wanted, I mean, my business was fairly simple, was a medical equipment company, but I wanted my business, I wanted the business plan to explain the business inside and out because I wanted others to take a look at it to give me their, their opinion. Uh, I didn't seek outside investors, but I still wanted to be reassured that this idea was a good one. So once I got my business plan together uh, and, and completed after months of working on it, I took that plan and gave it to uh, my advisory board, which was my insurance agent, my accountant, and my personal physician. And I really took the opinion of my personal phys physician uh, quite seriously because I knew that he would have insight into the, to the medical industry. And um, so I wanted my plan to be fairly comprehensive, even though it was not it wasn't a tech startup or a, a chemical plant, but still I wanted that plan for me personally it, to make the right decision because I was using my own money. I wanted I wanted to make sure I was making the right decision. Um, so some issues that are critical in preparing the business plan. Uh, the content and the basic format. We're going to take a look at uh, some of the f uh, some format suggestions. The effectiveness of the written presentation. So, and, and I'll talk a little bit about that. One thing I do want to say right now, though, not every business plan, plan is the same. The business plan, it's up to the owner to put the plan together. And every business plan is going to look a little different. Here are some factors, though, that can really help you determine what type of content and how extensive you want the content to be for a brand new startup. But the opportunity, what is, uh, what is the opportunity in the market or in the industry? Is it attractive? Well, we hope that it is. 
critical resources, the, the entrepreneurial team or the management team that's going to be uh, running this business on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, how you're going to finance the business, debt versus equity. We'll talk about that in a later chapter. And the external environment, the context that it's, it's basically existing in. All of these things will help make up the content of the plan. You, you will have access to some of the sections of my plan that I have uh, cut and pasted and put into your chapter resources folder. Be sure to take a look at those and get a feel for what a, you know a, an actual business plan looks like. Here are some of the um, sections that's, that could be in a plan. Obviously, the, the cover page with a logo, perhaps, um, a disclaimer, which we'll talk about later, table of contents, an executive summary, which we'll talk about later. But you can see all the different types of sections and the description for each. And again, depending on the business and depending on the entrepreneur who's creating this plan, all the sections, it's going to be up to the, the entrepreneur themselves. For, for example, I was initially the only employee. So my management team section was very short. Um, I was not seeking capital from outside investors. So there was no offering section in my plan. Therefore, there was no exit strategy either. Um, my financial plan, I put together some pro forma statements, which we will talk about later. But uh, it, that was very simple as well. So my plan was very different than someone who would be seeking investors or opening up a business, so let's say a restaurant that had five or six key managers involved. One of the things that I, I like to point out to students um, is and I, and I can't emphasize this enough the single most important section of the plan and I say this I think most people uh, in the in the business world would say this the single most important section of the plan is the executive summary and that's why I've included a copy of my own executive summary in the chapter resources folder so that you can take a look at it but basically what the executive summary has to do is capture the attention of the investor or capture the attention of the reader because that's the first thing they're going to look at and so as 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 entrepreneurs are putting their plan together the executive summary is actually the last section that they will uh, create because the executive summary gives a brief overview of everything and you want to be able to capture the attention and interest of the reader in that executive summary, pull them in, and then they will go beyond that and look in the separate sections. If you cannot do that in the executive summary, in other words, if you lose their interest and your idea is not compelling enough, they probably are not going to look at the rest of the document. So you need to have all this information in the executive summary in, in a more of a narrative or like you were telling a story. So it's almost like uh, an elevator pitch. The executive summary is um, it's created so that you capture the attention and interest much like an elevator pitch does and you're describing in a very quickly in a, in a, uh, a summation format the the business itself and why you think it's a great idea so the executive summary is the single most important section of the plan because that's what people look at first and if you can't pull them in at that point um, then you're going to lose them and I'm not going to go through each of the sections uh, it's if we looked at that in this on this slide and but I did want to point out the executive summary being the most important part and then you can go down and, and take a look at, at the rest of the um, sections. Um, 
Lastly, one thing that you do want to make sure that you do, you want to make sure that you support any claims that you have, any statistics that you quote, uh, and support that in the appendix by putting uh, the, the sources, the copies of the information, photographs, uh, that's where resumes of, of owners and managers might be, um, contracts of sale, published research that you've, you've done. That's all going to be in the appendix section of the business plan. Now, as I stated earlier, and you can breathe a sigh of relief, I'm not going to, uh, in the summer semester, since we only have 12 weeks, I'm not going to ask you to create a complete business plan, but I am going to ask you to complete certain sections of it through the assignments. So you will actually be working on a plan bit by bit, you actually won't be creating a complete plan and turning it in like I require during the normal semesters, but you'll be getting the same uh, information and the same knowledge uh, through the assignments. So what's some advice for writing a business plan? Well, obviously we want to make sure that our analysis is very thorough. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we want to provide solid evidence of any claims we make. We want to think like an investor. We want to, to make sure that, you know, if, if I was reading this document as a potential investor, what's going to catch my eye? What's going to look, at, uh, look like a valuable investment or a viable investment? Pay attention to details. Maintain confidentiality. You're going to see... Um, a uh, disclaimer, a confidentiality disclaimer that basically says that those people who are viewing or given the business plan have to sign this confidentiality or non-disclosure agreement, NDA, that says we're looking at this as a potential investment, we will not steal the idea, we will not give the idea away, and so forth. So you have to maintain confidentiality. I've mentioned a couple times about being objective. Here's where you don't hide weaknesses. In other words, if there are risk involved, if there are some weaknesses, you need to be objective and put that in the plan. Uh, not everything is going to be perfect, so you have to be truthful with yourself and your investors by showing that there, there are risk involved. So being objective and not hiding weaknesses is very important. Analyzing the market thoroughly here, uh, some mistakes to avoid when um, preparing a business plan. Just a couple I'll uh, highlight, failing to be objective, you need to be objective. Don't sugarcoat it just because it's something you want to do. Don't sugarcoat it because you really want this business to work. Obviously you do, but you've got to be truthful with yourself and to your investors. Um, don't hide weaknesses using bad grammar don't want to do that this document is a professional document it has to be written like one so make sure that it flows you proofread there's no misspellings it's punctuated correctly um, it's a professional document folks so it's got to look like one and you don't want to make it too long what's the right length well, there's no right answer, but I can tell you that a 200-page business plan is probably not going to be looked at completely by anyone. Uh, the, the business plan, you know, um, it, it just has to serve its purpose. And the, the, the don't by not getting too wordy and drawing uh, drawing it out is uh, that's part of good writing. As you're pitching to investors, and um, before I forget, inside um, the chapter resources folder is a document that explains uh, the elevator pitch. And that's, the elevator pitch is obviously a verbal presentation, but the business plan is more the written presentation. So, but when you're pitching to investors, you're identifying the problem up front, introducing your solution, um, and identifying the target market and so forth. 
communicating the value proposition. What value do you bring? But this this pitching, this pitch is really how the executive summary needs this is a perfect guide for the executive summary. As you're writing the executive summary, you're trying to basically tell a story about why this business is going to work. And so this, these hints or tips on pitching to investors is perfect for writing the executive summary. It's also something that you can use uh, as you're creating a elevator pitch which is simply the verbal presentation so if you ever watch shark tanks you see uh, the elevator pitch that's what they're doing on television they're giving an elevator pitch to the potential uh, investors or the sharks some resources for business plan preparation there's all types of books there's com computer aided business plans I don't think of any, most of this is not necessary. Um, you can take a look at some current business plans to get a really good idea. But um, there, there, and, the, and there's professionals who will write it for you. I, I advise against that, uh, unless it's just a really complex plan that's seeking millions and millions of dollars of investment. But a mom and pop operation or a small business, family business that's going to be created, I think that the owners need to create it and I, because they know the most about the business. And here's some key terms for the chapter. Um, take a look at the assignments. There are assignments, uh, multiple assignments for this chapter. Um, there is only one quiz, but please make sure that you complete the assignments and complete the quizzes, take a look at the videos, and uh, all the resources that are in the chapter resources folder. Uh, this is a very intricate and important part of the course because the business plan in, uh, for the most part, is the capstone assignment. You are not going to be required to create a complete business plan, but throughout the semester, you will be required through assignments to create bits and pieces and certain sections of the plan. So in essence, you will be creating one or at least a partial part of a business plan. Okay, that's it for this chapter. I hope you learned something and I will talk to you soon. Take care, stay safe.